actually making the Cayman games for children. Absolutely disgusting. The year is 2004. People are pretending to be interested in the Olympics. The disgusting reptile Zuckerberg invented Facebook. And George Bush kept the presidency by showing everyone how amazing his golf swing was. <laughs> Meanwhile in Japan, Daddy Miyamoto is preparing to descend from the heaven to show the Western gauge in his latest creation. You see, the Pokemon series was in its third generation and had pretty much established a format across the core series. Catch Pokemon, get badges, win game, cry at lack of post-game content, and at this point the series had never really ventured into making 3D games for the home consoles apart from the Pokemon Stadium games, which were less real games and more an excuse to justify buying a link cable. And thus Miyamoto used the excuse of the recent release of the GameCube to bridge this gap in the series. I have a red apple, which is an actually good game. And the blue one, which is 3D bullshit. Look what will happen. The Cayman Colosseum is a pretty radical departure gameplay-wise from previous series titles. Right off the bat pretty much all the battles within Colosseum are double battles, while double battles featured in the core games before. This is one of the first times that it takes center stage. This changes the way trainer battles are approached, as it allows for greater tactical planning and strategy. As you proceed through the game, the AI will begin to take advantage of these types of combinations, which is where a lot of the game's later challenge will come from. Fuck you Dakin. Fuck you. Another major difference compared to other titles is that the game's world is not focused around the earning of gym badges in order to progress. These have been replaced with specific coliseums and battle areas littered throughout the world, which present the player with a series of increasingly difficult battles in return for prizes and plot progression in some cases, the most notorious and challenging of these being Mount Battle, a series of 100 battles which is pretty much akin to Chinese water torture. The final and probably most significant of these changes is the way in which you obtain new Pokémon as you proceed through the game. There are no wild Pokémon, so instead the player is required to catch opposing trainers' Pokémon in order to expand their party. However the player is limited in the available Pokémon they are able to obtain, as the player is only able to catch specific shadow Pokémon within trainer battle. This means there is an incredibly limited pool of potential Pokémon to choose from, which further adds to the difficulty. The one thing to take away from this game is that it is hard. Bullbustingly hard, the kind of hard that Nintendo seem to shy away from in their current Pokemon title. Whether it is sudden and unforgiving spikes in difficulty, or an exceedingly limited selection of available Pokemon, or the weird arbitrary stipulations put upon the player such as only having one chance to catch each shadow Pokemon prior to the post-game. While I personally have no issue with the difficulty, these factors were definitely improved on in the game's sequel Gales of Darkness. As with the gameplay, the story of Pokémon Colosseum differs from the conventional story of Pokémon games. The Pokémon Colosseum story follows a story of Wes, former member of criminal organization Team Snagem and wearer of clothes rejected from a Final Fantasy fan fiction. After destroying the base of his former employers and stealing the Snag Machine, he eventually ends up in Fennec City where he ends up saving Rui. Rui had been captured by another criminal organization, Cypher, maybe because she looks like a weird misty cosplayer, but more likely because she is able to see the shadowy aura around their newest creation, the Shadow Pokémon. Shadow Pokémon are special Pokémon that have been engineered in order to artificially shut the doors to their hearts, which sounds like the most Kingdom Hearts thing I've ever heard. As a result of saving Rui, Wes is tasked with discovering the plans behind the Shadow Pokémon and saving the world or whatever. In this quest, the player travels around the Ore region and visits many interesting and varied locations, such as Fennec City, Pyrite Town, The Under, and Rialgam Tower. Across these locations the player will face off against both regular trainers as well as the forces of Team Snagem and Cypher. Including battling the Cypher admins such as fucking Dakin and Mirabi, the greatest character in the history of fiction. In general the Ore region offers a different environment than other regions, due in part to the inhospitable and arid nature as well as the settlements that exist within it. While this was a design choice in order to justify the snagging mechanic and the region being populated with Pokémon from previous generations, it definitely gives the game a distinct atmosphere. One that I wish the series would return to in the future, though I feel it is as likely as Nintendo not including a Fire Emblem character in the Smash Ultimate DLC. Overall Pokémon Colosseum is a game I'm very fond of, despite its sharp difficulty curve and limitations that were solved in the sequel, Colosseum has a charm that I feel many fans of the series appreciate, while I admit that I wear rose tinted glasses whenever I discuss it, I think it's a game that has aged very well compared to other games from that time and one that I would definitely recommend. 
but only through totally legal means. Nintendo, please don't sue me. I did it. I proclaimed the virtues of a 15-year-old game to children on the internet. I'm finally cool.